Hi guys. Um, I thought after yesterday's practice that I might take this time to do a, a, just a short instructional video for your I2 sites. There seemed to be a little bit of confusion about how to apply a, a C collar. Uh, also, the way I demonstrated in the prax seemed to be something new to a lot of you, so I thought it's probably worth covering it in just a quick video uh, for week one. A uh, couple of things about C collars or cervical collars. Uh, be careful with your language. Uh, they're not cervical collars, they're cervical collars. Obviously our cervix is in a different location to our cervical spine. So be careful with the language. They are, it does matter. In our kits we have two types of collars. We have the adjustable collar, uh, which you'll see. And also we have the size, some single sized version. Uh, this one's a regular, where we put the the, uh, the peg there in the sizing hole. This is probably the one you're more familiar with. This is probably the version that you see out on the road in clinical practice. So I'll quickly show you both today. This version here, uh, we'll use this one first. Sizing is pretty much the same from version to version. It's the finger technique, top of the trap, to the angle of the jaw, okay? So here, and obviously, when you measure this, the patient's head should be in neutral, okay? It shouldn't be hyperflexed, it shouldn't be hyperextended. The patient's head would be probably being supported by a second officer or your partner, uh, and the chin or the head would be in neutral. So if I was to measure from the top of the trap here, along the angle of the jaw, as you can see there, that's probably four of my fingers. How that translates to the collar is that it is measured from the bottom of the plastic, okay, not the foam, the bottom of the plastic. Bottom of the plastic up to the collar, that's three, four, puts it in that top post. With these ones, the red dot needs to be in the fourth spot, if you like, or which correlates with the width of your fingers, and then you press these in to lock it, making sure that you're in the same hole on either side. Okay, so that's locked in now, and as you can see, that can't be changed now. When you go to apply the collar, let's take it for granted that someone's supporting uh, my patient's C-spine. Give the back a little bit of a bend or mould it, so it goes on in the, in the manner that it's designed to. I like to stick my finger, or my index finger, through the large hole, okay? Through here, if you can see that. Sorry, the background's a little bit busy. And my other three fingers around the front like that. Okay? And then I hold it almost like a puppet, if you'd like. Okay, that gives me control of the collar. I don't come straight at the patient's face or neck or chin like this. I start out on the patient's chest, making the collar as flat as possible, and I slide up and underneath the chin. At this point, I'll mould the opposite or the, the short side around the patient's neck. And then I take this side and I feed it through underneath the patient's neck. And I look for the Velcro or the frame to come out the other side. You can see the Velcro there maybe, hopefully. Then I take the Velcro and I pull it out. With my right hand still controlling the patient's head, my tip of my index finger is actually on the angle of the patient's jaw. So I'm in holding the collar in the manner I am, but I'm also controlling the patient's head as well, which is also added support or added immobilisation. At this point, I pull, bring the Velcro up and attach it, make sure that Velcro is locked down, okay? And then that collar's on, and that patient's head is in a pretty neutral position. Hopefully you can see that. It's as simple as that. I'll show you with the other one. Again, I'll size it. Top of the trap, patient's head in neutral. That's pretty, pretty spot on to four, fing four of my fingers. Again, I take it to the collar. Bottom of the plastic, not the foam. That's almost spot on four fingers to the sizing post. So I take the stud, press it through the sizing hole or the sizing post, 
mold it, mold it, hold it like a puppet. Again, index finger through the big hole, three fingers on the outside, hopefully you can see that, and flat up the patient's chest, making sure all the foam sits nicely, this one's been used a little bit, up underneath the patient's chin, wrap around this side, feed the long side under till we see the frame and or the Velcro, find that Velcro, pull it out away from the patient, and then bring it up and secure it. Make sure it's all stuck down properly. And again, you can see that's pretty easy. The rationale for doing it this way is that the alternate way that you've seen, which is not necessarily incorrect, this is just an, an alternate method to consider. What you see a lot with the, the old way is, and I'll just bring the camera down a little bit. What you see with the, the old way or the other way if you like, is someone will feed the collar through all the way like that till they can see it. Then they'll go to bring the chin section of the collar around and it's misaligned and poorly placed. So when then you get a lot of this readjustment and what that readjustment does is it creates a lot of head movement. So the whole point of the procedure is to limit movement of the cervical spine. Okay? So if your method increases the movement of the patient's spine and head, then it's probably arguable that it's not the best method. Okay, so this method requires a lot of readjustment because rarely does someone slide that under and they have it in a perfect position where they can bring the chin around. So the method I've shown you today is much preferable in that the collar seats onto the chin straight away. And then you feed the the long section round the back and under and that patient or my mannequin's head has hardly moved at all there, there's next to no movement. Pull it out again, wrap it around, press that velcro down. So you can see in the, the method that I've shown you is there's considerably less movement in the patient's head and cervical spine. Uh, look, that's how I do it, I think you'll find most on-road paramedics, particularly in New South Wales, are probably doing it this way. Something for you guys to consider in terms of the choice of method that you take in terms of uh, putting on a cervical collar. Alright, good job. Thanks.